welcome. I'm Tim and this is SV Paquita. Come along as I stumble through trying to make a transition from being a lifelong professional mariner to switching over to the recreational side, learning how to sail and uh, hopefully one day getting ready to sail around the world. Right now, we're in the Caribbean, getting ready to uh, come back to New England pretty soon, so strap in, come aboard, and uh, hope you like what we have to show you here. Thanks uh, so much for watching. At the end of every hitch, it's always time to come back to Marina Pescaderia. And uh, it's always like Christmas morning, finding all the stuff that I ordered, and it's waiting to be put on the boat. So we left Puerto Real a few hours later than I wanted to, but that's kind of the way things go. We've got to get everything ready. Anyway, we sailed for a little bit. I didn't think I was going to have any wind to sail, and we had a little bit of wind there, sailing on just the head sail for a little while, making about five and a half, six, six and a half knots at times. And then it went all crazy everywhere. And now look at this. I don't know if you can see it or not. But that's all the rain that's coming our way. And of course, I knew the rain was coming because I took down the, uh, the connector. The connector goes from the Dodger over to the Bimini. And in taking that down, that always guarantees that we're going to get massive amounts of rains on us. So, here it comes. Anyway, since the, the system has been pulling the wind all around in every direction, I reeled everything in and uh, fired up the main and uh, we're motoring on to uh, hopefully get into La Paguera tonight. Anchored in about 10 feet of some of the clearest water I've ever seen. Of course, I uh, didn't do any underwater shots because I never think of this until afterwards. But anyway, you can see, uh, <laughs> I don't know if you saw that there or not. Uh, we put the whisker pole out and a uh, little uh, hammock chair and Chris Alita was able to hang out there. You'll see some more pictures of that here coming up shortly. But when we got there, we cruised over and went for a little ride and then we uh, stopped over and had lunch in La Paguera. Uh, one of the rooftop places over there, and that was all kinds of fun. And then uh, we went back to the boat and uh, hung out there for a little while. Like I say, that's where we put her in the chair, and uh, I told her if she was good, I'd let her back on the boat. No, I didn't tell her that. <laughs> anyway, this is the first time setting that up, and it's turned out to be a real favorite on the boat. Uh, you know, I buy a lot of gadgets for the boat, and they don't always pay off. This one was definitely worth the investment. I think it was $35 or something like that. It wasn't that big an investment. But anyway, we had a beautiful sunset on the boat, and it was great. And then uh, after the sunset and a few cocktails, uh, we packed up and uh, went back into uh, motor, you know, took the dinghy back into shore and uh, walked around, and we were going to go on the... Uh, bioluminescent bay tour. Now I've just sped this up just because it's kind of boring for a lot of you, I would imagine. Um, La Paguera and all of Puerto Rico was just coming out of uh, the COVID thing. This was actually a month earlier than me editing this right now. And as of last week, uh, well, it's Sunday now, as of Thursday, uh, all the restrictions have been uh, lifted here in Puerto Rico, so there aren't any restrictions for masks or uh, vaccination cards, and all the restaurants are 100%. So this place now, you'll see in upcoming videos, uh, is uh, much busier now, and uh, that's kind of fun. But anyway, we worked our way over to uh, a commercial boat that took us over to see the bioluminescent bay and while we were waiting for the to get on there uh <laughs> chris was feeding the uh big tarp in there so if you you're gonna see her uh winding up some uh a little thing here they have dog food in here and she was getting this and throwing it in of course it's dark so the camera doesn't really pick up the uh tarp in that much but it was a whole lot of fun and we checked out the by Luminescent Bay, and it was really great. So with Gilligan's Island being shut down for the pandemic, uh, we went around to the, the mangroves around the anchorage, and uh, 
found this little almost like an estuary but i don't believe there's any fresh water so i don't think that's considered an estuary doesn't an estuary have to be brackish water you know salt and fresh and look at these things these things are moving around see that right there i wonder if i can coax it i'm trying to figure out what these things are look at it oh it's a little jelly look at that it's pretty cool Anyway, so we brought the dinghy in, I've tied it up to a little rock, now we're explo exploring a little. First time we've been on terra firma for a while. You can see beyond the, the uh, reef out there, it's pretty nasty in there, so we're getting good protection in here. Probably not the most beautiful beach I've ever seen, but there is something cool about being the only ones on the beach. Probably not all the time, you know? I mean, probably, probably not part of the area that sees a lot of people. That's kind of cool. My Rhode Island friends will say, Look, they're piping plovers. <laughs> I don't think they are, but. Oh, it's so nasty. Oh, it's so nasty. Oh, <laughs> Having a boat gives us access that I've never had before to places like this that I don't know how you'd get here if you didn't have your own little dinghy that you could kind of run in here. It's cool. These little sand, these sandpipers, is that what you would call these? Something like that. It may sound trivial to some, but uh, you know, having a dinghy really is a lot. I mean, it's funny, you buy a big boat and then you use the dinghy to have a lot of fun in. And uh, I mean, it probably, probably sounds funny if you haven't experienced it. But this place, I've been literally coming here, not to this place, but to Gilligan's Island, the other side of this, um, for 10 or 15 years. and. Uh, never got around here. In fact, I've never heard of anyone that's ever gone here or anything like that. So I'm not saying that I'm the only person. There's other people that have done this. It's just that I would have never known about any of this if I didn't have my own boat and went over there and had to lift up the motor there because it was getting a little shoal. But uh, then blasting around the mangroves, it's uh, a lot of fun. You'll hear Chris <laughs> getting all excited because there's, as we're going, fish are jumping almost into the boat and running, flying away and uh, say flying away there they go scooting across the water it's very very fun but uh always a big sucker for loving the dinghy rip <laughs> ripping around on the dinghy it was a lot of fun but something happened that was really cool we, when we came back to the boat you're gonna see us come back you're gonna see uh we 
realize we are sharing the anchorage with two really cool uh, Amels. There's a Amel, I think, 53 and 55 or something like that. Anyway, I went over and started talking to these people with French flags, and uh, they spoke English, and uh, they were some really cool cruisers that had met together uh, coming from France over to the Caribbean, and they're now they're they're making their way headed for the canal, and then uh, French Polynesia, and doing the same route that I hope to do. You can see we're just passing there. I'm gonna have another still picture coming up with them pretty soon here, but uh, anyway, they were wonderful, and uh, we there's a, there they are right there with a uh, Paquita in the mix. Anyway, they invited us over for dinner, and they had caught a great big marlin, and. Uh, Cooked it up, French wine, amazing cuisine, great conversation, and uh, you know it, it it it's hard to tell people that haven't done it, but cruising is great to go see places and that sort of thing. But when you uh, meet other people, it's a cultural exchange. It's really fun. But anyway, after that, uh, Chris and I started coming back, and look at this. We went fishing. We caught all kinds of stuff. We were inspired by the French people that had caught the marlin, and uh, we caught that great big uh, mutton snapper. And uh, that was pretty awesome. So, a couple days later, some of the people in the French boat went to uh, the Dominican Republic, and uh, the other people on the other French boat came to uh, uh, Cabo Rojo and uh, Marina okay, Pescaderia. And they came over and uh, hung out with us, and we took them up to Rincon for the day. They went for a sail, and uh, it was really fun hanging out with them. And uh, this is just me coming out of the uh, marina. That's okay. And what you can't really see here is is that I'm towing a dinghy alongside, and I have to get the dinghy in between one of these pilings and and the the. The sailboat, so that I don't squish it. But we got out just fine. We went to Rincon for the day, and uh, it was really great. Came back, and uh, hey, take care, Troy. We'll be back tonight. Like I was saying, my limited hey, experience. Daddy Yankees coming next at the end of the month. <laughs> my limited experience uh, cruising <laughs> has really paid off uh, in dividends with meeting people from all around the world with all kind of the similar goals and really really rewarding these people are great after we spent the day in Rincon we came back and uh, came back to the marina, so I didn't remember. I was like, oh, we got to turn on the cameras. So I thought some of you guys might like to see how I back into the slip here. See, the only thing that was tricky about this is once again trying to get the dinghy to make sure that I don't catch the dinghy or use the dinghy as a big fender. I suppose there's nothing wrong with that. But you can see that this is a marina that uh, a lot of people traveling through all stop at. And so you see some really cool boats here and meet some really cool people at the same time. So right here, the camera that you see moving, I'm sure that some people are going to ask me who's shooting the stuff. This is a uh, GoPro 360, so I just mount it and I'm able in, you know, the editing software to move where you see things so now instead of looking forward I've moved it into my slip that's where we where we're going to ultimately back into and uh, so this is where I, I back up and hope that uh, some of my quick water will shoot the dinghy alongside us so that we can sneak in together with the dinghy we only have a few inches to spare between the piling between the two pilings and still have enough room for the dinghy to get through but you'll see not that big a deal it's uh oddly enough much easier to dock than a 400 foot 
tug and barge unit. <laughs> That's going to go all the way to the bow. Okay. And are we good with the boat? Are we good with the, the, the dinghy? Yeah. All right, good deal. Perfect. Now we just come back nice and slow. Everybody's going to be happy. Okay, um, okay, you know what? What I'll do is I'll move over a little bit and we'll pull the dinghy through. There we go. Will that help out the dinghy? Yeah. I'm thinking that I should be able to back up a little bit. There we go, you got it, you got it. Oh, you know what? Come on, old man, move that boat! I know, the thing is turning into a big thunder on me. Back on the bow line. You want to throw me a line and I'll lock you off? No, I think we're good. I mean, uh, I, I got one locked up. Just, we, we just have to watch out that, uh, the, uh, uh-oh, uh-oh. You just let go of my line. You're floating, you're floating. <laughs> Oh no! There we go. Okay. All right, we're good, right? Yeah. And I'll use that as a it. Okay. Okay. Good. So we're all set. I'm gonna back up a little bit now. Well, I really hope you liked that video. It was a fun trip, and uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Next uh, video we're going to try to do of uh, me, Rick, and my pilot friend, uh, maritime pilot that is, sailing east and uh, getting beat up along the way. Anyway, until then, stay safe, and I'll see you guys on the one.